guys, Chris Blue Fiber Tree here, and like I told you, we are going to do um, how to warp and get started with a weaving frame. We use the Ashford weaving frames. They have two. They have a small weaving frame that is 15 inches by nine and three quarters, which is what we're going to use today because it will go much quicker. Then they have the larger weaving frame which is 27 by 19 inches. Um, this is awesome because even on the larger frame, if you get a larger frame, you can do smaller projects. You don't have to take up the whole entire width and height of your frame. Um, I just wanted to show you the two different ones that they have. The larger one's 55, the smaller one's 45. Those are gonna be anywhere you buy them because Ashford says, this is what you sell my stuff for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I have in front of me is the large, excuse me, the small weaving frame. Um, these are our sides, the longer pieces. This is our top and our bottom for the frame. You will see Ashford, New Zealand on that. Those need to face down and up so that you know you're warping your frame right because you have to have this ridge right here to catch your warp thread okay now i know ponytail holders i can't live without them you pop these together like this see i have my ashford at the top i take this little guy because believe it or not they can pop especially if you use them a lot <laughs> They like to pop and I don't want to be in the middle of something and watch things pop and rubber bands only work for so long because they will they break snap. so for five dollars and 99 cents I think I bought I don't know a hundred of these 50 or a hundred of them and I like the thicker ones because they're easier for my hands to get on and off um, but I also use them I use the ponytail holders to kind of help in how I put my cords on um, you will see other instructional videos out there that may start the warp and end the warp differently than I do. Neither is wrong. Everybody kind of does what feels right to them. So this is how I warp the weaving loom. Um, when you have your warping threads, all right, this is one from Ashford. This is strictly the tapestry loom warping thread, okay? It's 100% cotton. It is not a slick cotton. Um, it's a rustic. Yeah, it's you, very... can, you can tell You can tell by the sheen. There is no sheen, it's a very flat. Um, so that is your standard warping thread. This is from DMC. This is like your crochet cottons. Um, size three. That's what I thought, okay. It's a size three, and you can see the sheen on this one. And not just because there's plastic on it. Well, here, there's the top of it. There's a little bit of a sheen on this. Mm -hmm. This sheen that's on there, while you can use this to warp, it can be a little slick. It can cause it to to slip as you're trying to warp it. Okay? Depending on your fibers. Right, yeah. and you want to keep tension. Today, I'm using neither one of these because I want to use a little bit of a thicker cord just so you can see. So I'm actually cheating and using some of my macrame cord. <laughs> um, I just want a thicker cord. I think it will be easier for you guys to see. So when I am starting this, I come in and I do a basic slip knot and I leave a long enough tail to be able to get around my stuff. All right. I come down here, I put it over the bar and I tighten my little slip knot. Okay, I turn my loom so that I can go from side to side and I come up through that first hole or that first slit. I come around and I'm going to show you, see that right there? This has to go right behind that. If you're not falling into the grooves, I know it's not easy to do Stop this. Stop moving. I can't help it. <laughs> um, you have to come into the grooves when you're doing this. There's no other way around it because it will pop off and it will slide. All right, I'm gonna move this back down. And all you do is you come back and forth. And I'm pulling. So I want tight, 
but I don't want like so tight that it doesn't move. All right, a little bit of a bounce in your thread is fine. Um, and I kind of hold each side as I go because it helps me maintain my consistency of my tension. So your warp threads have to have enough tension, but not so much because once you start weaving, it's going to take up that slack. It is. And you need to have a little slack or you can't move your cords. You know, that's the other side of it is you need to be able to weave them. And if they're so tight that you can't get in between things, it gets kind of annoying. Um, pardon me, I'm unrolling some cord for you guys. And really, this is a quick process <clears throat> of warping. It's the tension that is the thing that takes. The tension takes more time than actually running the cords up and down. And some people run the cords up and down and then come back and check tension. Um, I really just kind of like to do it all at once. It makes my life easier. Mm -hmm. Because when you get a loose thread, then you have to pull each one back and forth till you get it back taut. I will tell you, the finer the thread that you warp with, the harder it is to keep tension. This is thicker, so this is not going to create a lot of issues for me for tension. But it, when it's the finer threads, you have to pay a lot more attention to, attention to the tension. <laughs> we have a ton of fun with these because really, once you get going with learning all the stitches, the basic stitches of tapestry, it's really only limited by your imagination. Um, you can weave with pretty much anything that's weavable. So when we do our basic tapestry workshop, you will pay for the workshop fees and for a skein of, or a cone of warping thread of your choice that you're gonna be using. You bring your own leftover yarns and any other thing as a warp material. Um, I usually have an extra bucket here. Yeah. I usually provide some of the fiber for people when they're doing uh, sumac so they can get braids in. Um, but that's where, you know, it helps you because this is going to show you how to use up all your excess fibers and stuff that you have left over from projects. Okay, I'm at the end. This is still my bottom. I'm leaving myself a decently long tail. I'm coming around and this is where my little bands get into place because then I don't have to tie any knots on the end. Oh, there you go. I just make my life so much easier. I go under one and then I come back and go under both of them. And after I get that through there, I move it off to the side and everything is the same has the same tension throughout okay nice now normally I would use the exact same product to make my little base and when I say base I'm creating a baseline that as I'm weaving everything kind of gets shifted down to that and it kind of holds things in place so that when this comes off of your loom, these little loops that are at the bottom, you don't want your work to slide down. So we're gonna create a stable line that literally just says, hey, I'm here, we're not going anywhere. I'm gonna get a grab a different product real quick because I don't wanna, like I said, I don't wanna warp with that. I want you to be able to see what's happening. So we're gonna create a baseline just using yarn. Normally I would not use yarn. But again, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, when you're creating this base, I do something called a lock stitch. And it is something that I learned in the hair world when you put extensions in. But I have found that it carries over into tapestry. And when you're gonna do a lock stitch, you want to have six widths of your frame. And it I don't mean your frame, but just even the weaving area. And you may not use it all, but allows you to know that you have enough to get through it. 
I'm just going to cut. You want a large-eyed tapestry needle for this, only, well, more because I have a very thick worsted yarn. You're going to thread, maybe. And let's see your needle. Hold on. Nope. Yeah. So see the, the curve? These work really well when you're doing this. It, it allows does. you to get under. It does. All right. So the very first thing I'm doing is I'm just tying a regular overhand knot. At the end, I doubled my thread, okay? I went through, came back, and tied a knot, okay? This little end, this will get cut off later when you're done. So for the very first thing I do, I come to my very first thread. I go underneath my warp thread. I open up the area that has the knot and I go through it and I latch on, okay? I tuck the, my little ends down underneath and I don't slide this down really until I'm done um, because if you're trying to get this all the way down here while you work, I can do it, but most new people cannot. For the sake of argument, I'm just gonna stay a little bit above the bottom of my loom. So you're gonna want to go through every single solitary hook in this. We're gonna create a triangle. So I usually come up, go around my first finger. I lift my next, my next thread and you can see there's kind of a triangle. So where it comes up and comes back down, I'm gonna go under this and up through. All right, I'm gonna change my angle so I can be behind you That's a little fine. bit. So that they can see this yep. from this I'm direction. I'm gonna create another triangle. Here, I'm gonna scoot this up. So I'm gonna create a triangle. I'm gonna go under my thread and up through. If I were to pull my needle up here or down here, I'm not locking my thread in place, okay? Now, if you pull too tight, you're gonna cause your warp threads to come in. You want to make sure it's just right in the position that you want it to be. You wanna keep those threads as vertical and as spaced apart evenly across the entire thing. Okay, so again, I'm gonna make a triangle. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna come up through in between the two sides of my thread. And I'm gonna pull and make sure I have appropriate tension. All right, I'm just gonna continue across. And you'll see, I've done this so much that I no longer have to sit here and lift the cord, do this. Like you get to a point where you, this is, you know, you're doing this by rote. It just becomes habit and you know what to do. You don't have to think about it. And little fingers drop. <laughs> Story of my life. So this is just creating that baseline so that when it is taken off of the loom, it's not going to go anywhere. I don't want anything to slide. Okay. Yeah. And if you're going to do like fringe work uh, with Raya knots, it will slide. <laughs> If you don't have anything in there, your rye knots will slide all the way down into that hoop. And then either your whole thing starts shifting or you end up with these gaps and you're like, wow, I really should have wove that better. And in reality, you just need to put a baseline in your work. Um, sorry, my yarn was twisting. That doesn't happen, by the way, guys, if you're using warp thread. It's not going to twist like that on you as you're going through the work. Now, I want you to see, this is really loose right there. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna tighten it because I want to, like I said, maintain even tension. So that's what happens when I talk and warp and talk and work. 
You can see I'm using my pointer finger and my thumb to kind of hold the thread as it comes through so that I keep it in the place it needs to be. That way I don't put too much tension and start pulling my, yarn, my threads together. And it sounds silly, but before you go to actually do your first piece, man, take, take some practice threads. Don't even, you don't even have to waste your expensive warping threads. You can use a cotton cording like what I'm using that's thicker just to get your hands into the motion, get into the rhythm of, of warping, and then just grab some yarn and practice this stitch across the bottom. I'm going to laugh if I run out of thread <laughs> because it'll be the first time I've ever run out of thread. It's because you're using something different. I'm using something different and thicker. Oh, let me get all the way through. <laughs> you're going to run out. I am. Pretend she's at the end. Pretend I'm at the end. So if this was the end over here, you would just take this guy and you pop him to the back. I'm going to flip my loom and I cut this and I'm going to weave those ends in later. Okay. So when this is on there, again, pretend that's the edge of my project. We're going to slide this down and he's going to come all the way to the bottom because that is going to protect everything else that I put onto this loom after the fact. So that, real simple in a nutshell, is how we warp the loom. I'm gonna bring it up here. So again, we're gonna disregard these first four. Oops, my bad. It's okay. Um, this gives us our baseline. I mean, it's really very simple. Um, if you've never worked with a frame loom, frame looms come in all sizes. There are people that have smaller frame looms like this so that you can weave bracelets. Um, it's really cool. I don't work with smaller threads very often because of my very bad hands. But for those of you that ever want to get into really cool bracelets, find those smaller frames. They're awesome. Yep. Um, we'll be back in a few weeks and I'm going to go through and show you the stitches that you need for the base basics tapestry. Okay, guys, I hope you have a lovely day. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Uh, visit the Blue Fiber Tree on Facebook, Longtail Knits, Alchemy. We're all on Facebook, Instagram. Um, comment. Let us know if there's anything else you need to see. Hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.